The fact that the stacks are completely independent of memory is an important reason for the speed of these computers. One of the best ways to slow a machine down is to have its stacks share the same memory that your data and program space are occupying. The structure of them is unusual because they are circular, and this is actually an asset. There are all kinds of programming techniques we'll discuss in later courses uh, that can take advantage of their circular nature. At the moment, what we intend to do is to make completely clear how each of the two stacks works. The answer is that they work identically. The only difference between the return stack and the data stack is that the data stack has two registers on top of it, whereas the return stack has just the R register on top of it. Otherwise, if you look at S and R as being the registers adjacent to the stack arrays, the two stacks behave exactly the same. The stack array can be regarded as being a ring. That's the simplest way to conceptualize it because it'll make it the easiest for you to predict its behavior when things happen. So the only thing that can happen is that data can move one way or the other, one step at a time, around this ring. There's a break in the ring at the element which is closest to R or S. And that's where the differences happen on pushing and popping. Otherwise, the only difference between pushing and popping either stack is the direction of rotation of the stack elements in the array in concept. To push an element onto the stack, one of the, one of the registers, whichever one's appropriate for that particular stack, feeds a new item into this element of the array, shown here in the lower right-hand corner. And the array rotates clockwise so that the element that previously had been in this slot is basically vaporized. It's totally lost. There's no way to recover it whatsoever. So that shoves an item off the end of the stack as you're putting one in from the feed register. Popping an element from the stack is the opposite process. It involves a counterclockwise rotation of the array, and it involves having the contents of that item feed the register R or S, which is the next logical element in the stack. Note that when you pop a stack item, not only is the top item in the array fed into R or S, but it also is copied into the bottom item of the array. This is important to remember. You will find it a great advantageous programming technique if you remember how it works. So, when we speak of the stacks, we call the data stack a 10-element stack because, in fact, it has the two registers, which are logically part of the stack. The only respect in which this isn't a t full 10-element stack in the way we build stacks is that only these eight items here behave circularly. S and T don't participate in the circle, but rather is a stub to the circle. Similarly, R, along with the return stack array, constitutes a 9-element return stack, not an 8-element return stack, but again, only the eight elements underneath of R do the rotation thing. Otherwise identical.